This is Ryan Elliott for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. We're in Camden. It's up on workout day with me, Shane McGuigan. Shane Lawrence Acoli headlining this weekend. I'm assured we do have a roof at the O2 Arena. We'll start there. What was going through your head when you've seen all them videos? Uh, not ideal, but yeah, glad, glad to know that it's still going ahead because he's put a lot, of, uh, a lot of effort into this training camp. So yeah, I really believe he's going to be in the best physical shape he's ever been in. So looking forward to this one. We've all heard the talk of one in unifications and, and the big fights, but in Cislac, it's someone he can't really afford to overlook, is it? No, he's a one loss against uh, one of the other world champions in Makab uh, Makabu, and he um, arguably won it. Yeah, I mean, he lost it by a round or two. Um, but I thought, actually, if you scored it, it was very, very close. So, yeah, we can't, can't take our eye off the ball with Cislac, but I don't think he's going to be uh, up, to the, up to the mark to beat Lawrence Acoli. He's like someone that's shown himself to be durable, but I was looking earlier, it's been a long time since Lawrence Acoli went the distance with anybody. I think it was back to the Matty Askin fight. What is it that he's improved on most in the time you've kind of been working with him? Um, I think we're seven fights in now with Lawrence. Um, yeah, and it's just gradual progressions. Um, he had a couple of awkward opponents early on. He had a guy called Gidano who just ran away from him. Uh, but ever since people are trying to come and have a fight and actually have, you know, come to win, uh, I think you know you, that's when you've seen the best of him, and obviously he's, uh, Jezuski, and then he obviously knocked out Gowacki and uh, Prasovic as well. So his last few ones have been um, have been pretty good. So <laughs> pretty good performances. He's been able to maintain the distance. He's always had power, but you know it's just giving him the confidence to be able to maintain the distance all the time. So he's not smothering his work, and he's not um, he's not getting into scrappy exchanges. So look, I always knew whenever he stepped up to levels people don't win fights in close at top levels so it was always going to suit him to be pushing him on to, to, to guys that are trying to keep, keep it long with him so yeah it's, um, it's going to be exciting on, on Saturday I think Cezlik like, is going to, going to bring out going to make him think because he's sharp at distance he's got good feet got good balance got good, good punch selection as well so he's well schooled so I think um, it's going to bring the best out of Lawrence but it's also he's going to be there to be taken out if all is well for Lawrence on Sunday and he moves on and keeps his belt, he's, we saw his tweet, if he can't get unification, he might just fancy going to heavyweight. Is it a bit of an added bonus knowing that the WBO do tend to take care of their champions when they move up? They do tend to manoeuvre them into eliminators or title shots pretty quick? Yeah, look at Usyk. You know what I mean? He got that shot at AJ because of the WBO. So the fact that we've gone this route and he is the WBO world champion, you know, obviously you've got uh, Big Joe Joyce, who's um, mandatory for the WBO. But we are we automatically get the mandatory spot. I don't think we'll, we'll beat him to it, but at the same time, we'll go straight after him. So it's always an option. I'd like him to have one fight at heavyweight, but without putting too much weight on, just dabble, dabble up there. I'd love him to box a Chris Ariola, someone like that, like a, you know, a guy that's challenged for world titles before. I think that'd be a huge fight. Um, you know, I just think his style is going to suit uh, these guys in this fraction slower. Um, he's got the, the size, the physicality, punch, punches, Definitely hard enough to be up there at heavyweight. Um, I've taken heavyweights on the pads. I've got a heavyweight in the gym. I know how good Lawrence Coley is, and I, I want him to get there. You know, if uh, we're not getting the opportunities down at cruiserweight, then we have to move up. But um, it's down to Eddie and, and um, 258 to get to get us those unifications. Return of Anthony Fowler as well on Sunday, middleweight uh, rather than 154. How much do you think it'll benefit him not having to cut that extra six pounds? And how's he looking approaching the fight as well? Yeah, he's looking good. I mean, he did a session this morning. We were scheduled to come in at four o'clock, but they changed it, so he didn't get he didn't get a chance to get here in time. So um, he was only going to do a little shadow and stuff. But he's been looking really, really good. Um, you know, I'm really I'm really excited about this this next step up up at um, middleweight for him because. It was taking a lot out of him to get that, that weight down, especially that last six pounds. Do you know what I mean, he'll do middleweight, he'll do it quite comfortably, but you just you never know how much that, that little bit's taken out of you to get down to the weight, you know. And it's not really about, it's not about being big for the weight for Anthony. He's, he's, got, he's, he's a very big puncher, so he doesn't need to get an added bonus of, like, to be a fraction bigger for the weight. I think he deals well with guys that are once he gets his timing in, he's, he, he, can, he can land his big shots, and I think it's going to suit him to be up at middleweight. So I'm excited. But, you know, we've got a durable opponent, and if we can get the stoppage, then that'd be, that'd be a beauty. It's been a busy time for you recently. You're up in Manchester. You had the Azim brothers out on the Calm Brookville, so I just wanted to go back there. Adam, particularly impressed. Both got the wins, though. Um, how happy were you with the, your night's work and their night's work? Yeah, I was actually really happy with Hassan's work. Um, he boxed MJ Hall, who's only been stopped a handful of times, buzzed him throughout the fight. 
Um, if they'd have weighed in at 10.7 or below, then he would have been able to use eights. And even MJ came up to us after and said, if you were an eight ounce gloves there, there would have been a difference. So he said he was a, a very heavy handed kid. So, you know, there's a lot of praise there from MJ. He's also seen a lot of, uh, he's um, seen a lot of different styles over the years. He's, he's had nearly 80 fights. So, um, yeah, for him to come in the dressing room after, was a lovely guy, by the way, come in afterwards and, and sort of give uh, Hassan some compliments and stuff. It was really nice. And obviously, Adam knocked his, uh, his uh, Jason Ellison out in, in the third round, followed him around the ring a little bit too much, was looking for the, the eye catching shot. Uh, I keep telling him that, you know, it's not about <laughs> getting that perfect knockout. People at, at this level aren't throwing back. So you're going to have to find the gaps, you're going to have to prize them open and try, cut the ring off and put them under pressure without exerting yourself. Um, he's learning all the time and he's getting better all the time. Um, you're going to see the best Adam whenever guys come to have a fight with him because he's a, he's a natural counter puncher. Um, but yeah, 19 years of age, genuine superstar in the making. I know I've been banging the drum about him, but that's how I feel. Um, he is a superstar in the making, lovely kid, nice family, as the dad as well as a lovely guy. So um, yeah, it's a pleasure to work with him and I'm, I'm glad that we've uh, got another big performance on a huge card in Sky Sports, so I was really happy. Just to go to the main event, I think I'm right in saying beforehand you did pick Brooke when asked. Uh, to go back to that main event, what did you make of the fight? Any surprises at all? Um, not really. Uh, I, I thought I thought Khan would have been a bit busier. I thought he'd have been a bit braver. Um, he was in his shell a little bit, trying to get through the rounds. Obviously, he was trying to get through the rounds, so then probably try and push it later on. But Kel had no no sign of letting up. He was in fantastic con condition. So credit to Domingo and himself for getting him there. Um, I think if you were to look back, I kept harming and harming, and I was, but I was looking at fights from Kel Brook back in like 20, uh, Amir Khan back in like 2016, 2017. It's a long time ago. You can't really dwell on fights when he's busy back then. Um, if you look at the Crawford fight, he got nailed with it in the first couple of, uh, literally minute, and he just went right into himself, himself. Whereas at least with the Kel Brook fight, when he was boxing Crawford, he was throwing back. He was giving him things to think about. He was letting his hands go and, and taking risks. So, um, yeah, I was, uh, I, I was impressed with Brooke. I thought he had a little bit more than, than what I gave him credit for, but I still picked him to win within six, side six rounds. Um, when, you know, but, I, I, you know, it's, it's time for definitely Amir Khan to hang him, hang him up. I'd love to see the, the Brooke versus Conor Ben fight. I think that'd be a fantastic fight. I don't think there's any point doing a Chris Eubank one because he's just too big. Uh, the last time he moved up out of his comfort zone was Golovkin and it's just, you know, you're not going to see Chris Eubank getting down much below 158. Um, so I think I'd love to see him, him versus um, Conor Ben. I think that'd be a fantastic fight. Um, and I, you know, I think Conor will win, but I, I think it's a great fight for Conor. And I think it's a, a massive fight for, uh, for the British public. I think everyone will get behind that and, and, and it would make a lot of money. Just a quick word on Chris Billum Smith. Last time we spoke, you were kind of putting a little bit of pressure on Eddie to make the Turkey fight happen, and you knew there was offers going out to, from Sky for the Reactpo fight. Instead, it looks like it is now signed Reactpo Turkey. Just get your reaction to that. Yeah, I mean, Matchroom's matchmaker and Christian is manager of uh, Turkey, and, and he obviously did the deal with with Sky Sports. So disappointed, uh, left a bit of a bitter taste in our mouth, especially because we vacated the British title. Um, and we did that with Matchroom's consent um, to, to do so because we're, we're boxing Turkey and apparently it was agreed. Um, so yeah, just disappointed. But he's yeah he's gonna he's, he's gonna be busy. He's gonna be out again. He's gonna be defending his European title. Uh, whether that whoever that's against, we're not quite sure. We're gonna have a have a sit down and discuss what what route we go. Um, he's looking to be out in April. He's in training. I trained him this morning. So. He's a bit disappointed, but at the same time, he's because it would have been an easy fight against Mikel. Well, let's be honest; like we've had him in sparring, he's battered him every time he's sparred him. Um, it would have been the easiest day's work, and he could have gone over to Sky on the platform, taken a decent payday if they'd have bid well on the on the purse bids and absolutely destroyed him. So, um, it's it's disappointing that he didn't get an easy touch like that, and then the fight that we w was scheduled to went amiss. Um, so, yeah. Look, well, uh, we've also been, the IBF have, have sort of asked about a purse bid between Mastanek and Chris, because he's number three and Chris is number one, so another route that we could potentially take. But look, we're going to see, we'll see what's on the table, speak to Eddie and, uh, and discuss.
Last one from me, uh, Fury White, now signed. I just wanted to get your thoughts on the fight. We've seen Tyson Fury change his style a bit for his last couple of fights. Which Tyson Fury do you think we'll see against Dillian White? I think it's going to be a competitive fight, but I think no matter what Tyson Fury turns up, he's going to win. Um, if he turns up, has a go with him, it might make it more competitive for White. If he stands on the outside and boxes him, it'll be less competitive, but less entertaining. I think he's going to win and probably inside the distance. I don't think he'll knock him out with one eye-catching shot. It'll wear him down and get him around six to eight. Um, but look, Dylan, Dylan White's a, a brave guy and he always uh, shows up. He always comes to have a fight. And I think that's the sort of style. You need to be fearless against Tyson Fury if you've got any chance of, of winning. It's heavyweight boxing. He's been on the deck a few times against Deontay Wilder, but Dylan White's not Deontay Wilder. He hasn't got that same power. Um, but it'll be an interesting fight. And look, I, I, I'm actually genuinely excited to see that fight just because there's always a possibility. But you know, Tyson Fury, he's, um, he's, the, he's the number one. All right, Shane, thank you as always for speaking to Boxing Social. We'll catch you soon.